Has NASCAR's throwback weekend at Darlington run its course? Because honestly, it feels like it has. It feels like all the good paint schemes have been exhausted because this year's crop of paint schemes, all the throwbacks that have been unveiled, are rather, especially for the Cup Series, at least. And Kevin Harvick's paint scheme is a perfect example of that. It's supposed to be a throwback to 2001 in the number 30 AOL car, which he was supposed to make his debut in. Obviously, we know that didn't happen. But the number four car that he's running this year looks nothing like that number 30 car from 2001. The colors are wrong, the design's wrong, the font's wrong. Nothing about that says this is a throwback to AOL. It just looks like a Sunny D paint scheme. And then you have Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s number 47 car, which looks fine if it was just a country croc paint scheme. But it's not. It's supposed to be a throwback to Dale Jarrett's 2001 UPS scheme, except you wouldn't know that looking at it. And then you have Chase Briscoe's throwback, which is a throwback to Tony Stewart's 2000 Turkey Night Grand Prix car, which is a sprint car, and obviously everybody knows about that one. That's why it's not recognizable at all. And then you have Eric Almirola's number 10 car that he's running, throwing it back to Dale Jr.'s 2001 Summer Daytona car, which is cool if Josh Berry hadn't already done it, and it just kind of looks weird on a Ford. There are a few more out there that just look bad in general, too. One of the most egregious throwbacks that we've seen this year is Kyle Busch and Lucas Oil. They're throwing it back literally to Fontana earlier this year when Kyle won. And they made like this whole video about how funny it is and like how great it is, but it's not really in the spirit of the throwback, right? It would have been much cooler to see like a Bobby Gerhardt throwback than just throwing it back to February when Kyle won. Which is cool, I guess, but it's really lazy and kind of doesn't really need a whole video for it. But for the, all the bad ones, there are some really good ones this year. Trackhouse Racing absolutely nailed it with the number one car in Ross Chastain. They're running a UPS throwback scheme, the same one that Ricky Stenhouse is running, except they executed way better. They even got UPS on the hood, which is a massive accomplishment. Obviously, it's a partner of WWE X, but at the same time, it's still cool that they got the actual sponsor to come back to be on the car. The 99 and Daniel Suarez looks great too. That Quaker State scheme, iconic, lasts forever. Trackhouse, once again, fantastic job on what they've done. The number 24 car of William Byron looks great, throwing it back to Jeff Gordon's 1998 Chrome Illusion paint scheme to honor the 50th anniversary of NASCAR. Obviously, it's the 75th anniversary. Might as well just run it back. Chase Elliott has another good one, running it back to his dad's days at Everham in that iconic red Dodge. They even got the right number font, too, which is a massive check mark in the right column, in my book, at least. I like to see when they have uh, you know, the right font and everything looks the same. Outside of that, you also have Harrison Burton running a throwback to his dad's XI paint scheme, which is really cool. And of course, we all love to see that black and pink on a race car, and Harrison needs to take advantage of it while he's still in the Cup Series, at least. Meanwhile, Xfinity teams have absolutely nailed it. Blaine Perkins, I think, has won this year's Darlington throwback paint scheme. The number 02 car is running the exact Kevin Harvick payday scheme with payday as a sponsor on the car. It looks absolutely fantastic. And then you have both RCR cars throwing it back to Kevin Harvick's days. You have the 21 car of Austin Hill running the Coast Guard throwback. And then you have the two of Sheldon Creed running the AC Delco throwback. Both of them look absolutely fantastic as well. Multiple other cars are running Kevin Harvick throwbacks. You have the 51 car, the uh, Jeremy Clements first Pacific funding car running a Jeff Bodine throwback, which is really cool. I know that their team sponsor, um, Steve Carnes, really, you know, was a huge Jeff Bodine fan. To see, to see that happen is pretty cool. Outside of that, though, there's so many ones that are just lackluster. And a lot of people in the Cup Series are running throwbacks to their parents or like a close family friend, which is super cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure it's really cool for all of them. But at the same time, it doesn't have the same meaning to the fans. And I know that other things about the fans. Of course not. And it's cool that Ryan Blaney is like throwing it back to his dad in his sprint car days. And Ryan Priest is, I think, throwing it back to his, his dad as well. Super cool. I would do the same thing if my dad and I, and I were in racing. But at the same time, there's just not really like that connection with the fans. And I feel like the Darlington Throwback Weekend has maybe lost its way in a sense. And potentially shelving it for five years would probably be the best thing to do. And then they come back and they go decade by decade, which I think was from the initial start kind of what the idea was. And somewhere along the way, like I said, it's lost its direction and its way. So coming back and then being like, hey, you can pick from the 60s, the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and eventually the 2020s even. I think that would be the right move to do. At the same time, you have to get sponsors on board with it. And that's really where like the big sticking point comes down to most of the time. Kevin Harvick's cars, for example. So what do you guys think? Do you think that Darlington's Throwback Weekend has run its course? Do you want to keep say it stay around for a little bit longer? I think the Truck Series guys have done a really good job this year as well. Tricon has basically just turned themselves into Red Horse Racing, which is pretty cool. Um, but at the same time, like I, I think there's more that could be done with this weekend. And probably putting it back on the Southern 500 weekend. I know, I know. 
It's in the playoffs. You have a lot of sponsors that don't want to run anything that doesn't look like their normal paint scheme because they want that recognition and they want that marketability. I get it. But to do it on like just the spring weekend in Darlington just kind of feels weird. And if North Wilkesbury is going to stick around since that's like a resto mod version of a racetrack, maybe we just move it to the all-star race and that just becomes like a throwback weekend race as well. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog. Like and subscribe. 